I learn in this letter that Don Peter of Aragon comes this night to Messina. He's very near by this. He was three weeks off my letter. Uh, how many gentlemen have you lost in this action? A few of any sort, and none of names. Our victory is twice itself, and the achiever brings home full numbers. I find here that Don Peter hath bestowed much honor on a young Florentine called Claudio. Much deserved upon his part, <laughs> doing in the figure of a man the feats of a lion. Uh, my, uh, he has an uncle here in the scene. We'll be very much glad to hear of it. I have already delivered him letters, and there appears much joy in him, so much that joy could not show itself modest enough without a badge of fitness. I pray you, is Signor Mountanto returned from the wars or no? I know none of that name, lady. There was none such in the army of any sort. What is he that you ask for me? My cousin means Signor Benedict of Padua. Oh, he's returned and as pleasant as ever he was. I pray you, how many have he killed and eaten in these wars? But how many have he killed? For indeed, I can mistreat all of his killing. By my faith, niece, you tax Signor Benedict too much, though he be meet with you, I doubt it not. He hath done good service in these wars, lady. <laughs> you had mercy, victual, and he had hope to eat it. He's a very valiant trencherman. He hath an excellent scholar. And a good soldier too, lady. <gasps> and a good soldier to a lady. <laughs> but what is he to a lord? A lord to a lord. A man to a man, stuffed with all honourable virtues. Yes, so indeed. He is no less than a stuffed man. <laughs> but for the suffering, well, we are all mortal. You must not so mistake my niece. There's a kind of merry war between Signor Benedict and her. Oh, they never meet, but there's a skirmish of wit between them. Uh, alas, he gets nothing by that. In our last conflict, four of his five wits went falling off, so that now a whole man is going with one. So that if he have wit enough to be known a reasonable creature, it is all the wealth that he hath left. 
Who is his companion now? He is every month in the company of a new sworn brother. Is it possible? Very easily possible. He wears his faith well as the fashion of his hat. There are changes with the next block. I see, lady. The gentleman is not in your books. No, and we were, I would burn my study. <laughs> but who is his companion? Is there no young square in art to make a voyage with him to the devil? Uh, he is most in the company of the right noble Claudia. <gasps> oh, Lord, he will hang upon him like a disease. He is soon a court of the pestilence, and the taker runs presently, man. God help the noble Claudia. If he had caught the Benedict, it will cost him a thousand pounds, and he would sure <laughs> I will hold friends with you, lady. Do, good friends. <laughs> You'll never run mad, niece. No, not till a hot January. <laughs> Don Pedro is it, in front. Oh! 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 question her that you did ask her? Signor Benedict, no, for then were you a child. <laughs> now we may guess by this being what you are, a man. Hmm. In truth, the lady doth father herself. Oh, no, be happy, lady, thou wilt make an honorable father. If Signor Leonardo be her father, she should not have his head on her shoulders for all Messina as like him as she is. I wonder that you will still be talking, Signor Benedict. What? My dear lady, this day? Are you yet living? It's possible this day should die while she has such meat food to feed her to Signor Benedict. <laughs> courtesy itself must convert to disdain if you come in her presence. Then is courtesy a turncoat? But it is certain I am loved of all ladies, oh, only you have yeah. accepted, and I would rightly find in my heart that I had not a hard heart. <laughs> For truly, I a oh. dear happiness to women! <laughs> yeah, they would else have been troubled with a pernicious suitor. Oh, I thank God and my cold blood. I am of your humour for that. I would rather hear my dog bark to crow than a man swear he loves me. Yeah, God yeah. keep your ladyship in that mind, so some gentleman or other may see the predestined and scratched face. Oh, 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 oh. Did not make it worse into such a place as yours were. <laughs> well, you are a rare parent. A bird of my tongue is better than a beast right. of yours. I would my horse have the speed of your tongue. Yeah, I'm so going to continue. But keep in your way, God's name. You! Always under the jade's trick. I know you of old. Mm. You have it all, Leonardo. Good Signor Claudio, Signor Benedict, my good friend Leonardo, have invited you all. I have said we will stay but a month, and he prays some occasion he was longer. <laughs> let, let me bid you welcome, my lord. Being reconciled with the prince, your brother, I owe you all duty. I thank you. I'm not of many words, but I thank you. Uh, may it please your lord walk on. Oh, give me your hand, Leonardo. We'll go together. <laughs> 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 I don't know the daughter of Signor Leonardo. Her? I know her not. I have looked on her. Is she not a modest young lady? Do you ask me as an honest man should do for my sin to judge? Or would you have me speak after my custom as being a professed tyrant to their sex? No, I pray thee, speak in sober judgment. Why? Ah, faith thinks she 
It's too low for a high praise, too brown for a fair praise, and too little for a great praise. Only this commendation can I afford her, that were she other than she is, she were unhandsome. And being no other but as she is, I do not like her. How thick is my sport? I pray thee, tell me truly how thou likest her. Why would you buy her that you inquire after her? Can the world buy such a jewel? Yeah, and a case to put it into. Come, speak to this with the sad bro. What key shall a man take you to go in somewhere? In my eye, she is the sweetest lady that ever I looked on. Yeah, I can see it without spectacles. I see no such a matter. Then there's her cousin. And she were not possessed with such a fury. Ah, exceeds her as much in beauty as the first of May doth the last of December. I hope you have no intent to turn husband, have you? Have you? I would scarce trust myself. Though I have sworn the contrary, if Hera would be my Ah, oh, is it come to this? In fate, shall I never see a bachelor three score again? Oh, two. Thou must thrust thy neck into a yoke, wear the privet, and sigh away some days. What secret hath held you here that you follow not Leonardo? I would your grace <laughs> constrain me to tell. I charge thee thy allegiance. <clears throat> Upon my allegiance? <clears throat> With who? Well, that is your grace's part. Mark how short his answer is. With hero! Ha <laughs> ha! I was short, daughter. If this were so, so were it uttered. God forbid it should be so. If my passion changed not shortly, God forbid it should be otherwise. Amen if you love her, for she is a worthy woman. You speak this to fetch me in, my lord. I speak my troth. And in faith, my lord, I spoke mine. mine. By my two troths and faiths, my lord. Mm. That I love her, uh, I feel. That she is worthy, I know. But I neither feel how she should be loved, nor know how she should be worthy, is the opinion that fire cannot know out of me. I will die in it, I mistake. Thou wast ever the obstinate heretic in despite of beauty. He never could maintain his part, but in the force of his will. <sighs> that a woman conceived me, I think her. That she brought me up, I likewise give her most humble things. <laughs> but that I should have a reed cheat winded in my forehead, or hang my bugle in an invisible baldric, all women shall pardon me, because I will not do them the wrong to mistrust any, I will do myself the right to trust none, and the fine is, for the which I may go the finer, I will live a bachelor. I will see thee ere I die the pale with love, with anger, with sickness, or with hunger. <laughs> love. Prove that ever again I shall lose more blood with love and I can get again with drinking, pluck out my eyes with a ballad maker's pen, and hang me up at the door of a brothel house under the side of blind Cupid. If you fall from this fate, it would make an excellent argument. So if I do, hang me in a bottle, like a cat, and let him shoot at me, and he that strikes first, let him be clapped on the shoulder, and called Adam, in time shall try, and in time the savage bull doth bear the oak. Mm, the savage bull may, but if ever the sensible man did do it, pluck off the horns, put them in my forehead, and let me be vilely painted, and in such great letters as they write here is good horse to hire, let them signify under my side, here you may find Benedict, the merry man, if this should happen, thou was the horn man. Mm. Well, <clears throat> in the meantime, prepare yourself to Leonato's, commend me to him, and tell him I will not fail him at supper. Ah, I have great enough matter in me for such an embassage. <laughs> And so, I commit to you to the tuition of God for my house, if I have it, the 6th of July, your loving friend, Benedict. <laughs> Nay, mock not. Mock not. The body of your discourse is sometimes guarded by fragments, and the guards are based on neither. Ere you flout old ends any further, examine your conscience. And so I need you. Mm. My liege, your highness now may do me good. Ooh. My love is thine to teach, teach it but how, and you will see how apt it is to learn any hard lesson. May you be good. Have Leonardo any son, my lord? No. Oh, uh, no, 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 <laughs> that, uh, no heir but hero. Uh, she is his only. Uh, dost thou affect her, Claudio? Oh, my lord, when you went onward on this end of action, I looked upon her with a soldier's eye, but liked, but had a rough Italian hand that drive liking to the name of love. But now I have returned, and that war thoughts have left their places vacant. In their rooms come thronging soft and delicate desires, all prompting me how fair young hero is, saying I liked her ere I went to war. If you love her, cherish it. I will break with her and with her father, and thou shalt have her. <laughs> how sweetly you do with this sister to love, mm. but no love's grief by his complexion. 
But lest my liking make you sudden seem, I, I would have salved it with a longer treaty. Oh, tis one thou loss, I will fit thee with a remedy. I know we will have revelling tonight, and I will fit some disguise, and call myself Claudio, and to Hero I will unclasp her bosom, and pour out my heart, and take her hearing prisoner with the force and strong encounter of my amorous tale. And then to her father will I go, oh, and the conclusion is thou shalt have her in practice. Let us put it presently. Writing songs of love. What the good year, my lord? Must not for me. Why you the sad and measure sad? There's no measure in the occasion that breeds, therefore the service is about limits. Well, you should hear reason, one. When I've heard it, what blessings bring it? If not a present remedy, then at least a patient seal. Oh, I'm high, but I am. I must be sad when I cause and smile at no man's jests, eat when I have stomach. Wait for no man's leisure, sleep when I'm drowsy, and tempt on no man's business, and laugh when I'm merry, and claw no man in his humour. Yea, but you must not make the full show of it till you may do so without controlment. You have, of late, stood out against your brother, and he has taken you newly into his grace. It is needful that you frame the scene for your own heart. I'd rather be a canker in a hedge than a rose in his graces. It better befits my blood to be disdained of all fashion a carriage to rob love of any. In this, though I cannot be said to be a flattering, honest man, it must not be denied I'm a plain-dealing villain. Eh? Untrusted, with a muscle, and enfranchised with a clog. Therefore, I have decreed not to sing in my cage. If I had my mouth, I would bite. If I had my liberty, I'd do my liking. In the meantime, let me be that I am. Seek not to alter me. Can you make no use of it? I make all use of it, fine, isn't it? Oh, oh. What news, Baraccio? I came yonder from a great supper. The prince, your brother, hath been royally entertained by Leonardo. And I can give you intelligence of an intended marriage. Will it serve for any model to build mischief on? What is he for a fool that betrays himself to unquietness? Uh... Marry! It is your brother's right hand! <laughs> no. The most exquisite Claudio. Yea, even he. A proper squire. A proper squire. I do, I do. What way looks he? Uh, marry! On Hero, the daughter and heir of Leonardo. How came you to this? Being entertained for a perfumer, I was smoking in a, in a musty room. It comes me the Prince and Claudio, hand in hand in sad conference. I whipped me behind the arras, and there heard it agreed upon that the Prince should woo Hero for himself, and having obtained her, give her to Count Claudio. Come, come, this may prove food to my displeasure. That young startup hath all the glory of my overthrow. I can cross him anyway. I bless myself every way. You're both sure, and will assist me. To the death, my lord. Well, come, let us to the supper. Their cheer is greater that I'm subdued. With the cook of my mind. <laughs> 